to celebrate Haikyuu's currently airing fourth season and to keep myself occupied as I try to think of a video essay topic, I decided to have a little fun with one of my all-time favourite sports anime. I've been a fan of the series for quite a few years now and have always loved having some hypothetical what-if type discussions with friends who are also fans of Haikyuu. Questions like who wins in a one-off game between Nekama and Abajosai? What happens to Kagiyama if he did in fact get accepted into Shiro Torizawa? How far do Kurosano go during the Miyagi Prefecturals? If the third years had decided not to return to the club after their defeat to Seijo in season 1. Questions like these have always been fun topics of conversation for us as we discuss our favourite volleyball series. So in the spirit of what ifs, I decided to put together a Haikyuu fantasy draft. Anyone watching this please feel free to play along with me and also feel free to like, subscribe and share this video if you're feeling generous. It's greatly appreciated if you do, so let's begin! So here is the objective of the video. I compiled a list of over 100 players who have appeared in the series to date. So it runs up to episode 3 of season 4, which as of writing this is the latest episode to have aired. After that I assigned a point value to every player based on their volleyball ability and the task is to create a team using a set number of points. The team needs to be hypothetically strong enough to win at the Miyagi prefectural level and at least be competitive if not outright win at the national level. Obviously. We haven't seen the true power level of many of the players and teams at the national stage as of yet, but we do have a clear idea of the level of both the Kanto and Miyagi prefectures and know that both Fukurodani and Chiritorizawa are both national level teams. If I can put together a team which could theoretically beat either of those teams, then I would be happy enough to call that a win. A quick note on the rating, I graded the players on a curve and so have two max players on the board, Wakatoshi Ushijima and Kiyomi Sakuza. Both are two of the top three aces in the country, so I figured it was a given putting each of them at a 10. Wakatsu Kiryu would also be a 10, but as he has not officially appeared in the series yet, outside of a name drop, he isn't included on the board. At the 9th spot I reserved it for players who excelled on the national stage or who are prominent members of the Japanese under-19s training camp. So players like Atsumu Miya are at this ranking. Moving down to 8, and we have the top players at the national and prefectural level. These are the aces of the strong schools or the top players from some of Haikyuu's powerhouse teams. Here I have players like Kaiji Akishi the setter of Fukurodani. From 7 to 7.5 I have above average starters to highly skilled starters or exceptional talents with some major flaws. At the 7 spot I have guys like Asahi, the wing spiker and ace of Karasuno. At the 7.5 mark I have strong starters like Kenma from Nekoma. He is an exceptional player but is lacking at a physical level so he falls short of an 8 rating. Finally at the 7.5 level are players like Lev or Hinata. Both are exceptionally talented and very dangerous weapons for a team but can be a double edged sword at times because their all-round ability leaves a lot to be desired, especially in some of the more technical elements of the game, such as serving or receiving. After that it descends in quality right down to players you'd see exiting in the first or second round of the preliminaries. These players cap out at a minimum score of 3.5. The rules of this exercise are as follows. There are three difficulty levels to try and complete your team at. Easy mode is putting together a team of 10 players, a 7-man starting rotation, one setter, a libero, three wing spikes and two middle blockers. You have 56.5 points to spend on those seven players. Putting together a broken team at this difficulty level should be relatively easy. For your bench you get six points to spend on each bench player in total. Note that you have to pick three bench players. You can't just pick up one or two and spend all your cap on those. Choosing the bench players is easy. All you need to do is choose any player from the list and deduct three points off their original value. So for example if I chose Hinata as one of my subs his value is 7.5 currently. I would minus 3 and he would now be valued at 4.5. That would leave me with 1.5 points to spend on the two remaining players to fill out the rest of the bench. For normal mode you have 55 points to spend on filling out your starters and 5.5 points to spend on your bench. Finally there is hard mode. On this level you have 53.5 points to spend on your starters and only 5 points to spend on your bench.
Revenge rotation. To further increase the difficulty at the hard level, when choosing your wing spikers, you must include two outside hitters and one opposite hitter. This is tough because opposite hitters are by far the weakest position in terms of depth, and the good ones cost a high amount of points. For this video and my first attempt at making a squad, I will be choosing to make my team on normal mode, but anyone who wants to play along, feel free to choose the difficulty level that you feel most comfortable with. A team's identity or philosophy has always been a key component of what makes each squad in the series feel so unique, and it is also a big part of what makes each group of players so relatable game to game. From the wild and reckless mavericks of Josenji to the calm and adaptable Nekuma, or the intricate gears of Karasuna working in unison to be greater than the sum of its parts, each squad brings something different to the table, and with no team's identity or makeup being an exact recreation of any other, each new matchup provides its own unique set of variables player duels and momentum turning plays which help to shape the outcome of the game being played. So as I went into making my team I first had to decide on the team's identity. Did I want an explosive team of mercurial geniuses like Lev, Hinata or Kiyotani or a defensive juggernaut that could shut down even the most potent of offenses? In the end I decided on three key elements which would make up the identity of my team. Intelligence, consistency and serving. I wanted the team to possess these three qualities above all others and was willing to sacrifice sacrifice a more dynamic, creative offense for a group of players who would consistently make the smartest play available to them in order to get the next point. If I could get a starting unit that could consistently pressure the other team's ability to make plays by pinning them back with explosive serves, then I believe that the players I chose were smart enough to keep errors to a minimum and be an almost impossible force to beat. My ace is the only player who somewhat breaks from this mold, but I believe the pieces I put around him are sharp enough to get the best out of him while limiting his ability to self-destruct or make unforced errors. So without further ado, here is a team I put together. Starting with our setter, and when you're looking for intelligence and big serves, there can only really be one choice, Toru Oikawa. He costs 8.5 points, which is a lot, but for such a key position, I had absolutely no reservations for sinking that much into Oikawa. His serves are monstrous and can easily swing the momentum of a game by themselves. On top of which, he has a great mind for the game and can quickly read the opposition's game plan and make adjustments on the fly. His sets might not be as crisp and as clean as Kagiyama's, but his ability to get the best out of his teammates was the thing that sealed the deal for me. As Ushiwaka states in the opening episode of Season 2, Oikawa can get the best out of everyone he plays with. He can make a weak team a powerful one and a strong team become unstoppable. Also, he can do this. Next up, I'm moving to the first of my wing spikers and my ace. There are a bunch of OP guys in this category and as much as I would like to grab Ushiwaka or Kiyomi Sakuza, the most powerful aces on the board, I didn't want to overspend on both the setter ace positions at the expense of other players. So if you can't get one of the big three aces then go for the next best thing, Kotaro Bokudo. The guy is an athletic freak. Like Oikawa, he has a thunderous serve as we saw in the OVA Land vs Sky. He also has serious hops and his shot selection when he is on form is incredible. Both his line spikes and cut shots are lethal and he is a regular at nationals, so the big occasion shouldn't get to him. His weaknesses are well documented. He can overly rely on a shot if he is feeling it that day, and that can become predictable for the opposing defense. He also can get into his own head if things don't go his way, but with a game manager like Oikawa and some of the other players I have on the squad, I believe Bokudo will be a nightmare for any team looking to shut him down, and I believe he will power this team's attack nicely. The other two Two wing spikers I chose to fill out the starting lineup are Tsutsomu Goshiki from Shiratorzawa and Kenji Furakuchi from Date Tech. Goshiki is the future of Shiratorzawa once Ushijima retires and one of the most naturally talented players in the series. His serve isn't at the level of Oikawa or Bokuto's, but he still employs a mean jump serve and it is a real weapon that can be a problem for the receivers of the other teams. On top of which, his line shots are exceptional already and will be a major problem for any defense which 
which will be focusing on stopping Bokudo. Like Bokudo, he can get into his own head and get flustered, which is only natural as a first year, but he responds well to advice, encouragement, or criticism, and I feel like Oikawa can make real use of him. Furakuchi, on the other hand, isn't the offensive weapon that either Goshiki or Bokuto are, but he can still get his, and as a third option, he can contribute when needed. The real reason I chose him, however, was his defensive ability. He was one part of Date Tech's incredibly potent iron wall, and his ability to assist the middle blockers in forming a strong defensive front swung it for me. Daichi was my first choice for this position, but I didn't have the points to make it work. Fudakuchi does, however, have some of the same qualities Daichi possesses. He is the current captain of Date Tech, and like the Karasuno captain, he too has a keen mind for the game, and overall doesn't have any real weaknesses. The middle blockers were going to be a key component of my team if I was including Fudakuchi in the lineup. I was going to rely on a strong blocking game. So for these positions I chose Tetsuru Kuro from Nekama and Yutaro Kindaichi from Abojosai. Kindaichi is a solid middle blocker. He is probably the weakest member of the starting lineup in terms of an ability to stamp his authority on the actual game itself, but he is still a strong player. His spikes are decent and he follows direction well. He isn't prone to mistakes and his size and blocking ability make him a solid inclusion in the middle block. Kuru, on the other hand, was an auto-include for me from the outset. I think he is the best middle blocker we've seen in the series so far in terms of an all-round ability. Aone and Tendo are both exceptional players too, but they have their weaknesses. Kuro is extremely well-rounded, intelligent, and his game sense is on par with Okawa's. On top of that, he can direct the players around him masterfully, and will be the key piece in solidifying the middle block alongside the younger Kindaichi. His spikes are strong too, and he showed that he can be a real threat on the offensive end as he pulls off some sweet quick attacks with his setter Kenma during games. He also showcased a real nice jump service game in the Land vs Sky OVA, and I think his cool head and good relationship with Bokudo will be a real asset in keeping the capricious ace in check. The final member of the rotation is the Libero, and again, like the ace, there were many strong candidates for this position. In the end, I narrowed it down to two people, Nishinoya from Karasuno and Morisuke Yaku from Nekoma. In the end, I settled on Yaku. He is known as a demon senpai by his teammates and commands respect from everyone he plays with in a similar manner to that of Iwaizumi from Abujosai. He has a great relationship with Kuro, and I think his personality is a good contrast to Oikawa and his style of leadership. On top of that, he is a killer libero and has dug up some crazy spikes during the games we've seen Nekoma featured in. I think he rounds out the rotation well and while Nishinoya is an absolute beast on the court, I feel Yaku has a slightly higher upside as a leader at this stage in their development with him being a year older and that was the deciding factor. So that's the lineup. I've got Oikawa as setter. The wing spikers are Goshiki, Furakuchi and Bokuto with Bokuto as the ace. Middle blockers are Kuro and Kendaichi and rounding out the team I put Yaku as the libero. As for the bench, I ended up going for an all Karasuno supporting unit. I picked up Koshi Sugawara as my backup setter. This allows the team to run double setter plays and he has a great ability to change the momentum of a game when he comes onto the court with his ability to identify game patterns that others often don't pick up on. The second player I picked up was Chikara Inoshida. He displayed real character in the quarterfinal matchup against Wakatani South when he was thrust into the fire as emergency cover for the injured Daichi. He serves as cover at the wing position and he is generally a positive presence for the rest of the squad. Finally there is Hisaishi Kinoshita and he is essentially a warm body. He's a good guy though and I've always liked him whenever he gets some screen time but I don't see him actually making it onto the court. There it is, my best attempt at putting together a team that could compete with the powerhouses of the Miyagi Prefecture and hopefully win, therefore moving on to the Nationals and killing it there too. Let me know how you think the team would fare in the comments below or follow the link in the description and make your own team and drop it in the comments. If there are enough responses to do so, I will make a follow-up podcast breaking down the best teams I find in the comments section. Also, if I can get this video to 2,000 views and 100 likes, I will update the list and redo the team at the end of Season 4 when we are more familiar with the teams who will be competing at Nationals, as well as the other players taking part in the National Youth Training Camp. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like, consider subscribing to the channel, and if you would share this video, that would be great too. It really helps get eyes on the channel and helps it grow. I really can't do that without your help. As always, check out the podcast. Links are in the description. Until next time, bye, bye, love you, bye.